Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session with physiotherapy uh, department just now. So uh, I'm Nadia from Department of Medical Engineering Faculty of Health Sciences, Mahsa University. So basically under the Faculty of Health Sciences, we have three departments which are Department of uh, Environmental Health, School of Physiotherapy as well as our department, Department of Medical Engineering. So with us today, I have uh, Ms. Fatiha Shafina, which is the program coordinator for Diploma in Medical Engineering. Ms. Fatiha Shafina is graduated from University of Malaya with Bachelor in Medical Engineering. After that, she pursued her study to the master level in UITM. So today, basically, we are going to be discussing about radiation protection in medical engineering. So how are you, Ms. Shafina? I'm good. How are you, Ms. Nadia? I hope that you're having a very good Saturday today. So let's move on to our discussion. Okay. When we talk about radiation, so basically uh, people have a very negative perception about radiation. So people tend to associate radiation with nuclear incidents, such as what happens in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, what happens in Fukushima Daiichi back in 2011. So uh, Let's open our mind with a brief introduction and definition about what is radiation actually. So thank you, Miss Nadia. Okay, like you say, I agree with what you said. If we mention radiation uh, at the public, when we mention radiation, it always seems like it's a negative thing, it's harmful to people. But actually, uh, we, we cannot really say that the radiation is uh, fully uh, dangerous or harmful, and it also has its benefits. Okay, so basically, radiation is a, a type of energy that can interact with medicine. So we have uh, two types of uh, radiation. We have the uh, background uh, radiation, which is in natural, and also we have man-made radiation. So example for um, natural radiation, uh, like from our surrounding, from the earth, from the uh, sun, from the soil, and uh, anything surrounding us. And like what we use in medical or in agriculture or certain other industry is this most man-made radiation where basically the radiation, uh, like in medical imaging, we are using the x-rays, so the radiation is actually comes from the x-ray field. So uh, when you mention that uh, people say um, or people think that the radiation is kind of negative thing, I think maybe it's because of um, we cannot see the radiation cannot feel the radiation, we don't know how it looks like, so uh, I think it is one of the factors that cause people to have that such negative perception towards the radiation. Okay, so we have so many types of radiation basically. Without being aware, we are using microwaves, we are using handphones, we are also traveling by air, which we are exposing ourselves to the cosmic radiation. So basically, in medical imaging, what are the types of radiation uh, other than extreme? What are the other radiation that we use? Okay, so uh, again, in radiation, we have um, ionizing radiation and non ionizing radiation. So, most of uh, radiation that we use in X ray department or in the medical field, it is uh, ionizing radiation such as X ray, we have gamma ray, and we also have um, a non ionizing radiation such as uh, ultrasound. Okay, it is a type of uh, non radiation as well. So uh, most of the procedure that we use, we're using uh, energy radiation uh, and most common is uh, X-ray. And uh, for example, we use X-ray in uh, general X-ray, we use in uh, computed tomography, CT scan, and also in proscopy and angiography. Even in um, uh, operation theater, we have our mobile, we have the arm machine that is using X-ray as the source as well. Okay. Um, and another thing, uh, another source of radiation, like I said, we use ultrasound, where we don't have, we don't use the um, ionizing radiation, we use the sound wave there. So okay. this is a category of radiation as well, but it is another radiation. It goes to, we have um, uh, MRI, mm -hmm. where it uses the magnetic and the radio frequency source to produce the image. Okay, so uh, apart from X-ray, do we have other additions, such as in the radio reflect reading? So we have, uh, uh, we, we're using uh, Ikamari okay, for, uh, for radio reflect imaging, where it involves uh, uh, 
some of the radio uh, pharmaceutical agents in order to uh, trace all the pathological or abnormalities in the human body. Okay. Right, now that we have known what are the types of radiation that we use, so how does the radiation workers, particularly radiographers and also the radiation therapists, protect ourselves? Okay. So in medical imaging, we have radiation protection. And we don't really um, simply expose all the radiation uh, without particular reason. Okay, so we uh, we're using the the principle of the radiation protection. We have uh, the certification, we have optimization, we have those limit where it is uh, established by ICRP, the International Commission uh, on the Radiological Protection, uh, where this body is a non-government body where it with all the uh, what we call the policy and all the radiation protection uh, rules for the whole uh, world. Okay. Um, so, like I said, we have uh, justification, we have optimization, and those things. Justification it means that uh, the every exposure that needs to be exposed to patients, uh, certain in the medical field, must be justified, must come with the benefit. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't mean that. Uh, you feel pain at some certain area, then definitely you have to go to your x ray. So you must have justification on why we, um, on, on why the doctor requires for that particular information. And on the optimization uh, factors, is that it must be optimized. It means um, when we expose the radiation to the patient during the x ray, so we have the amount of uh, exposure factors, meaning in terms of KVP and MAS, the energy of the particles or the extra water that needs to be out in the extra tube. So the optimization is that you, you, you have to make sure that the amount of exposure that you um, expose to the patient is uh, uh, according to the body part, okay, it must be optimal. Okay, let's say, uh, just to do some comparison, um, our hand, we can do extra at our hands, we can do extra at the body, so uh, it also depends on the thickness of your body. Okay, so um, the thicker your body part, you might have to receive more exposure factors. So uh, the selection of the exposure factors must be optimized. Okay, and then we also have those limits. Um, so those limit means um, every group of people they have their own those limits annually. Okay, so uh, for public, okay, uh, like for the audience out there, you are considered as public. So the those limit that you um, should receive uh, every year is uh, one million. So it is it is actually very minimal. And uh, every uh, healthcare worker, every student that go for their visa placement, they have their own uh, the limit as well. So this is one of the uh, principle of radiation protection that uh, compulsory to be applied in every uh, examination that involves radiation. And other than that, uh, practically in the hospital, uh, when we talk about the uh, Radiation protection. We actually have uh, shielding, okay, which is which is made from lead, and the lead actually can block the traveling of the X-ray to the body. So uh, we give the shielding to the patient, and in certain um, examination, like uh, where the radiographer or the healthcare practitioner need to be in contact or close contact with the patient uh, throughout the examination, like in radiography or fluoroscopy. Uh, then we have to protect ourselves using the lead shield. Okay, and um, lead shield uh, is not just uh, for the radiographer, it is also for the patient. When it is compulsory for the radiographer to give the shield in to protect the patient, especially at the radio sensitive area, such as the reproductive organ. And um, other than this shielding, we have uh, burgers, we have thyroid shield, we have uh, lead shield, we have gonad shield. Um, we have a glove made from lead, especially uh, for uh, radiologists or surgeons. We also have, um, uh, we, we also do the radiation protection in terms of monitoring our uh, dose that is received by our staff, I mean the radiographers. Okay, so we have the dosimeter where it can detect how much radiation you receive uh, per mile. So, um, so every time the radiographer needs to do the x ray, uh, it is compulsory for them to wear that dosimeter uh, to check whether they are being over exposure. But most of the time, it is not uh, over the limit because, uh, you know, especially when we do the general x-ray or even CT scan, uh, where 
dan the exposure is running in which I'm not in the living situation we are uh, sitting at the back of the pet control panel which is also covered with, with a shield, a light shield so it is actually one of the radiation protection okay and um, when we talk about uh, the uh, what we call the thoroscopy where we use uh, prolonged exposure um, it is actually have a uh, fixed barrier okay at the machine itself we have uh, a primary protective barrier. Okay, uh, same goes in the endoscopy room. Same goes in the uh, operation room. Okay, even in um, X-ray lab, in X-ray room, uh, all chilly, the walls, the floors are all equipped uh, with the lab actually inside the wall there to protect uh, the radiation not to go out from the room. So when people pass by the room. It will not expose to the right. So, for those who uh, might be those our prospective students mm -hmm. who might be interested in joining the enrolling into our program, enrolling into diploma in medical imaging, especially in medical imaging, after that they are going to be radiographers. So, they might be wondering after in 30 to 40 years of career, is it safe for them? Okay. So, um, in my opinion, uh, no matter how long you work, uh, if you're concerned, concerned about uh, dangerous or danger about uh, any harmful impact, it's not necessary to be radiation. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can, we actually cannot avoid any danger that might uh, come to us. But in terms of radiation, like all the radiation protection that mentioned just now, uh, I really think that it is not a problem or it will not be harmful to the practitioners or the radiographers if they have to work for 30 to 40 years because we are protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are not we, we don't simply expose the radiation to ourselves. And uh, in the medical uh, field, the amount of radiation that we use is very low okay, compared to other industries such as uh, such as uh, agriculture or research industry, so especially in the medical uh, field, the amount of radiation that uh, the patient is at control level, mm -hmm. is uh, below the threshold. So, uh, in my personal opinion, um, it will be not a big problem for a person to be a radiographer uh, for a long time if the radiation is there for mm -hmm. So, I hope that um, anyone out there who are interested to join us in the second venue, Please don't be afraid of the radiation. I, I know when we measure radiation, it's always uh, considered as a negative perception by public. Even myself, when I first enrolled in this course, people always ask me, uh, are you not afraid of the radiation? You might not get pregnant because of that. Okay, so uh, I do feel that last time, but now when we learn about uh, what is radiation, um, what is radiation, what is the benefit of it, then, then we know, okay? So, um, everything we have, the pros and cons of things with radiation, it can be harmful. I'm not saying that radiation is 100% um, has advantage on it. So, it has its own um, side effect, negative effect. But, um, in terms of um, medical, uh, it is uh, beneficial. It can be harmful if you use it in the wrong way. Okay, so... For everyone out there, our prospective students or our current students, um, please don't be afraid of radiation. Actually, I also would like to create awareness to all the people uh, that uh, don't take radiation as a negative, uh, negative thing or harmful thing. Like I said, around us, we are living with, with the radiation. They are living with us as well. Okay, like your mobile, mobile phone also got radiation. Okay, uh, but. Uh, yeah, we, we still have to take some precaution, not to um, wrongly use all this. It will cause some uh, effect. Yeah. All right, that's a great uh, point, uh, Ms. Shafina. I hope this discussion can change your perception about radiation, not only among the healthcare workers, but also to the public. So everything, basically everything in life has its own benefit, has its own risk. But the, the thing is, you have to have the knowledge on how do you want to utilize the benefit. 
and minimize them at the same time. So lastly, knowledge is power, information is liberty. Education is the premise of progress in every society, in every family, quoted by Kofi Annan. So stay tuned with the Mahasa Facebook as next week we are going to have a very interesting webinar on radiation safety and measurement. And with the, uh, for more information, you can log on to www.mahasa.ibu.my. Till then, stay safe everyone. Have a great weekend. Uh, Assalamualaikum.